In this video, we're going to make a turn-based battle system as used in many RPGs. We're going to listen to player input when it's his turn and do a simple attack. We're going to have a health system, health bar, damage pop-ups, and several other effects. Later, we're going to take this base and expand upon it with multiple enemies, special attacks, items, and so on. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is our goal. We have our player over here on the left and the enemy on the right. Currently, the active character is the player, as you can see by the selection circle being visible. Now it is currently waiting for player input. So, when I press the attack button, let's press. There he goes, he slides, attacks the enemy, and slides back. As you see, when he was done, it was the enemy's turn, and he immediately did the same thing. He slid to the player, attacked him, and then went back to his starting position. And when he's done, now it's back to being the player's turn. So over here, I can attack him again. There you go, attack back. Now it's him, he attacks, and he goes back. We also have some nice effects that make the hits feel very satisfying. So for example, the blood particles, and over here you can see the damage pop-up. The damage pop-up was created in a previous video, so in here we're simply going to add it. And at the end, as you can see, we are testing for which character is still alive based on their health, and we are correctly identifying a battle it is over and who was the winner. Alright, so this is our goal, a very nice, simple, turn-based battle system. Let's get to it! So here we are in our empty scene. Let's first spawn some simple characters. Over here I have a prefab which contains a script that handles the animations for a simple character. So let's just simply drop it in here in order to see how it works. There it is, there's the character just standing around. The code for the battle system is going to be completely separate from the animation system, so you can use any animation system you want. Okay, so we want to instantiate this prefab twice, one on the left for the player and one on the right for the enemy. So let's start off by making a script that will handle our battle. So in here we make a new c -sharp script, let's call it our battle handler. Let's make a new game object to add it. Ok, here we are in our empty script, let's first spawn our characters. So in order to spawn them we need a reference to our prefab, so let's add it. So let's add it as a serialized field, so we can now go into the editor and we can drag our prefab onto the field, ok. Now let's go into our private void start and let's instantiate both prefabs. Ok, let's see. And if there it is, one on the left side, one on the right. Ok, great. So far so good. We are correctly spawning two different characters. Now instead of calling instantiate directly, let's make a function to properly spawn our characters. So we have a function where we're going to do exactly what we did previously. However, in here, in order to define whether he goes on the left or on the right, let's just add a boolean for is player team. Ok, so if the character is on the player team, we spawn it on the left side, if it's not, then we spawn it on the right side. And now in here, we just do two very simple function calls, one on true and one on false. And yep, our characters are still being nicely spawned. Ok, great! Now that we have them in position, let's deal with attacks. Now so far, we've been using just empty characters, they do nothing other than stand around. So first, we need a script to control our character. So let's make a new C-sharp script, let's call it the character battle. Now in here we're going to add this script onto our character. So as you can see our character prefab now has the character battle and the character base script. Again the base script is the one that handles all the basic stuff related to the animations. So we don't really care how that is implemented, we just care about the function that it exposes. And on the character battle we're going to handle all of our battle logic. So let's open that script. And in here, the first thing we're going to do is, on awake, grab a reference to the character base. Alright, we have our reference. Let's just test to make sure that this is working. So, on our private void start, let's try playing some animation. So we should now see both characters playing the movement animation to the right. 
and yep, there it is, great. So we have our main script working. Now let's make a setup function that the battle handler will call to set up some starting values. So in here, get rid of this and make a public void call it setup. Since this is a mono behavior attached to a prefab, we can't actually make a constructor. So this setup function will essentially do what a constructor would do. So in this case, let's simply set different animations and textures for the player or the enemy. So on our setup, we receive a boolean for is player team. And if he is on the player team, let's go to the character base. In order to play the animations related to the sword to hand it on the back. And if not, let's have him set the sword shield animations. And let's also modify the texture. So you get the material and change the main texture. And now in here we need references for our textures. So let's add them into the battle handler. So in here we make a public texture 2D for the player sprite sheet and another public texture 2D for the enemy sprite sheet. Okay, and let's drag our references in the editor. Here's the battle handle and over here I have the two sprite sheets. So let's drag the player and the enemy, okay. Now in order to access these public fields from our character battle, we're going to make a simple static instance. Okay, so very simple. We have a private static instance and a public function to get the instance and the instance is set on awake. Now, obviously, if you're adding this to a full game, you would handle these references more appropriately, but for this scenario, this won't do. So we can now go back into our character battle and modify the main texture. We go into the battle handler, get the instance and get the player sprite sheet. And for this one, get the enemy sprite sheet. All right, so just like that, we should now be able to set different textures and different animations depending on whether it's the player or the enemy. So back in the battle handler, we just need to go to where we spawn our character. So we are instantiating the prefab. And the transform has a component of type character battle. And all we do is go into the character battle and call the setup function and pass in is player team. All right, this should be working. So in here, we instantiate our prefab. We get the component, we call the setup function, and on the setup function, we test if it is on the player team. If so, we play these animations with this texture, if not, this one and this one. So let's see if they are both different. And yep, there it is, they have different animations and different textures. Okay, great. So we now have a very nice setup function on our character battle, and we can pass in whatever fields we want to make different characters. Now that we have them different and unique, let's deal with the combat. So for the combat, we're going to listen to player input here on the battle handler. So let's make a private void update. And for our input, let's simply do input.getKeyDown. Our attack button will be the space bar. So when we press space, let's do a simple attack. Let's make our attack function on the character. So in here, we make a public void attack. Now in here, we need to know the target we're going to attack. So let's receive a reference to the character battle for our target. So this is the one we want to attack. So in here, all we do is play the animation. So go into the character base. So here I can pass in the direction for the animation, then some callbacks when the animation hits the target and when the animation is completed. For the direction, let's calculate the direction towards the target character battle. So that means we need the position of the target character battle. So let's make a simple helper function. Simply call it get position. This one just returns the position for this character. Okay, so we have our tech direction. Now on hit, let's not do anything. And on complete, let's go back to idle. Okay, that should do it. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is a lambda expression. So in here, this is essential creating a function very quickly right in here. So in this case, this is the same thing as this. So over here and this one are the exact same thing, just different representations, and this one is easier to write. 
All right, so we have our attack function. We receive our target. We calculate the direction towards the target. Then we play the animation using that direction. And when the attack animation has completed, we go back to idle. Now all we need to do is call this from the battle handler. So let's go in here. And in order to call it, we need references for our characters. So right now we just have two, so let's simply make a field, but later we're going to store them in a list. So for now, make a private a reference to a character battle. Okay, so here we are setting our fields when we spawn our characters. And when we press space, let's go into the player character battle in order to attack our enemy character battle. So let's see if we get an attack every time we press space. Okay, so here we are with both of them idle. Now I press space. And there you go, the player character made an attack and then went back to idle. All right, so every time I press space, he plays that animation and attacks. Okay, great. So far, so good. Now, one issue we have is that we can spam attacks. So in here, if I spam space, he's constantly attacking. Now, this is meant to be a turn-based battle system, so I should only be able to do one action per turn. So let's go onto our battle handler script. And in here, let's define some very simple states. We're making an enum to define all our possible states. And the possible ones are either waiting for player, so waiting for player input, or just busy. So when we start, let's say we are waiting for the player. And in here on our update, we're only going to listen to input if we are waiting for the player. So if state, if we are waiting for the player, then we do not listen to input. If not, then we don't. So when we do an attack, let's modify the state to be busy. Okay, now that means we also need to know when the attack has been completed. So let's set a callback to our attack function that will be triggered when the attack is completed. So over here on the attack, let's add an action that will simply be on attack complete. Now action is a very simple delegate that is on the system namespace. Okay. So in here we do our attack. When we finish, we play the idle animation and then let's call our callback. All right, so far so good. Now in the battle handler, we can now use that so for the callback, when the attack has been completed, let's return back into state.waitingForPlayer. All right, so we have a very simple state function. We only listen to input when we are waiting for the player. As soon as we hear the spacebar, we set it to busy and we start playing the attack animation, and we only go back to waiting for player when the attack has been completed. So it should now be working for just one action per turn. Let's see. Here we are, press space. There you go, normal attack. Now try to spam space. And there you go, I can no longer spam, I have to wait for the attack to be completed before I can attack again. Okay, awesome. Right, now for the attack, obviously this doesn't look good, he's attacking in there where the enemy is in there. So let's make him slide towards the enemy, and then he does the attack animation, and then he slides back. So let's go to the character battle, and in here, instead of playing the attack animation right away, let's do some sliding before that. Now in order to slide, we're going to have to add our code on our update. So in here we make a private void update. And in here we don't want the slide code to run every time, so we're going to do the same thing with it with the battle handler. So go up here, define another private enum for all our possible states. So here are our states, either idle, sliding, or busy. Start off at idle, and then on our update we do a normal switch on our states. And now here we add our sliding code on our sliding. Now in order to slide, we're just going to modify the transform.position, move it towards a certain position. So that means we need a slide target position. So let's go up here to define that. So we have a slide target position and in here, we're going to move towards that slide position. Okay, so here we are defining a certain slide speed and we simply modify our transform.position. We calculate the target direction multiplied by the speed and time dot delta time. We are not normalizing this, so essentially it's going to move very quickly and then slow down, which is exactly what we want. So we do our slide and afterwards, let's make a very simple distance check. 
we calculate the distance between our position and the slide target position. So we just test the distance between our position and the slide target position. If it is under our reach distance, then we have arrived at our slide target position. All right, so this is pretty much our sliding code. Now, in order to make it easy to slide, attack, and slide back, let's add a simple callback that will be triggered when we arrive at our slide target position. So we just go up here, define another action. This will be on slide complete. And we're simply going to call this action when we arrive. Okay, very simple code for our sliding. We just move our position towards the target by a certain speed. When we get within a certain distance, we simply trigger our callback. Okay, now let's make a function that will set up the necessary values. Okay, so in here, all we need to do is set our fields and modify our state. All right, very simple. Now that we have this, we can update our attack function and let's just test the slide. So let's comment this out. And said, let's simply call slide to position. Let's slide exactly on top of the target. So target get position. And when we get there, we're going to trigger this action. And for now, let's not do anything. So we should simply be able to see when we press space, he's going to slide towards the target. Let's see. Okay, here we are both on idle and press space. And there you go, he slides exactly towards the target and stops. Okay, great. Now let's combine the slide with the attack. So in here, we essentially copy the attack code when the slide has been completed. And we don't want to slide exactly on top of the target, but a bit to the left of him. So we calculate our slide target position to be on the target. Then we add the vector pointing towards our position. So this way we don't stand right on top of the target. So we do our slide to that position, then we do the attack just like we did previously. Except when the attack is completed, we're not going to call on attack completed, but instead let's slide back to our original position. So we do the attack, then when we finish, let's slide back. Right, so here it is our code. So first we slide to our target. When we get there, we play our attack animation. When the attack animation has been completed, we slide back to our starting position. And when we are back at the starting position, we go back to idle and we trigger on attack complete. And let's just update our states. All right, just like that. So let's see if the character slides the target, attacks him and goes back. So here we are with both of them idle. Let's press space. There you go, slide, attack, slide back. Okay, great. So the logic completely worked. Slide, attack, slide back. Right, great. Now let's also apply the slide animations to make it look better. So over here, let's simply play the slide animation. There's a slide left and the slide right. Okay, this should be better, let's see. Okay, here we are, press space. There you go, he slides, attack, slides back and goes back to idle. Okay, awesome. Now, just one final thing, let's deal with the idle animations. So the enemy should be idling towards the player. So very simple. All we need is to know if it's on the player team, so let's store this. All right, so we now have a very simple function to play the idle animation. So this should help us make sure that our sprites are always facing the correct direction. Okay, so they are both facing the correct direction, press space, and there you go, slide, attack, slide back. All right, great. And I also can't spam space, so if I attack, now I have to wait, and yep, I can attack again. Okay, great. So we have a very basic turn-based attack working. Now let's make the enemy attack as well. So that means giving him a turn. Now over here on the battle handler, essentially we need to know whose turn it is, if it's the player or the enemy. So let's go up here, 
and we're going to store a character battle for the active character battle. So this is the one that is active right now. Let's make a function to set it. Okay, so here we just set the active character battle. Now by default, let's start off with the player being active. So let's go in here. And now let's make a function that will choose the next active character. So a private void, let's call it choose next active character. And since we're starting simple with just two characters, this will be very easy. So here we just test if the active character battle is the player character battle. Then we set the active to be the enemy. And if not, we set it to be the player and we set the state to be waiting for the player. Okay, so this function should correctly swap between the player and the enemy. Now over here, when the player does his attack, at the end, instead of going to waiting for player, we simply call choose the next character. So the player does his attack, then choose the next, which will choose the enemy. And when it's the enemy's turn, let's do an attack very much like the player. So since they're both using the same script, it's very easy. We just copy this. And it's the enemy attacking the player. All right, so that's pretty much it. We start off with the player being the active character. So once we are waiting for the player, we listen to input. As soon as we press space, we do our attack. When the attack is completed, we choose the next active character. Since we are currently on the player, the next one will be the enemy. The enemy will attack the player. Once the enemy is finished, then we choose the next, which will be the player, and so on. So we should now be able to see first the player turn, then the enemy turn. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we are, everything is idle. We're waiting for player input. So let's press space. There you go, attack, back. And yep, now the enemy, attack, back. And now we're back to the player. So press space. And yep, and whilst it's the enemy turn, obviously I cannot attack. So I have to wait for the enemy to be done. And now it's my turn, and now attack. Okay, great. So everything is working correctly. The logic for switching who is active at which turn is now currently working. Now let's add a visual to be able to easily see which one is currently active. So for the visual, let's modify our prefab. And over here, we can't see the character since the animation system only runs when the game is running. But we can see the shadow here, and under the shadow, we can place our circle outline texture. Just a very simple texture. Let's tint it in green. And let's call this the selection circle. Okay, so there it is. Let's play just to make sure both of them have the circle. And yep, both of them have the selection circle. Okay, great. Now let's make two functions to hide and show. So over here on the character bottle. So here we're grabbing the reference on awake for our selection circle and all we need to do in order to show and hide it is very simple. We just call the game object set active in order to hide it, set it to false and to show it, set it to true. Okay, so we have two functions to control the visibility of our selection circle and in here we just hide it by default. And now let's go into our battle handler and in here when we are setting the active character battle, let's test if we have an active character battle. If so, then we tell this one to hide its selection circle. Then we swap out for the new one and we tell the new one to show the selection circle. All right, so we should now be able to see which one is currently active. Okay, so there it is. As you can see, the player is the one currently active. So press space, attack, back, and yep, now he's active and he does attack and back to me. And attack, and there you go, and great, awesome. So we can now visually see which one is active in this turn. So with that working, it's time to actually deal some damage. For that, we need a health system. Over here, I have a very simple health system. This was created in a previous video, so check the link in the description. It's pretty simple. We just have the health as an integer and a bunch of functions to modify it along with some events that get triggered when something happens. So let's go into our character battle. And here, let's create our health system. So we have a field for the health system. And we create it over here on our setup. And let's start them off with 100 health. 
Okay, so we have constructed our health system. Now let's make a function to take damage. So over here, a polyvoid damage. And we simply go into the health system and cause some damage. Now in here, we need the amount. And that's pretty much it. Now all we need is to go over here on our attack animation. And in here, we have two callbacks, on hit and on complete. So let's use the on hit. This one is triggered when the animation actually hits the target. So in here, we go into the target character battle to cause damage. And for now, let's just simply put a certain value. Okay, so that should do it. We should now be able to deal damage while attacking. To make sure that it's working, let's add some pop-ups in here. So using the CodeMonkey CM debug class, this is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So let's simply do a text pop-up saying hit and then our current health. All right, well, let's see if we are correctly attacking. Okay, so here we are. Now we should be able to attack him. And when we do, we should be able to see a pop-up. And since we're dealing 10 amount of damage, we should be able to see the pop-up saying 90. Press, and there you go, hit, and he has 90 health left. And same thing there, hit him again. And now he has 80, he hits me, and 80. Okay, awesome. So we have correctly added a very simple health system. Now that we have damage, let's test when a character dies. So when the character dies, Let's expose a function that will test if the character is dead. So a public bull is dead. And all we do is return the health system that is dead. So with this function, we can go back to the battle handler. And over here, we can now identify if one character is dead. So when we choose the next active character, let's test if the battle is over. So let's make here a private bull test battle over. This will return true if the battle is over. So we're going to call this function over here. If the battle is over, we return. So we stop this function, so we no longer select the next active. If not, then we continue to do it. Now to test if the battle is over. Since right now we just have the player versus the enemy, this is very simple. So if the player character battle is dead, the player is dead and the enemy wins, If the enemy is dead, then the enemy is dead and the player wins. In either case, the battle is over. And if neither of these, then the battle is not over. All right, that should do it. Let's add some pop-ups for testing. Now let's test if it's working. So over here, let's increase the amount of damage. Okay, here we are, let's hit him. And with 40 damage, he now has 60. Now hit him again. Now he has 20. And now when I hit him, he's going to die. Let's see, hit him. And the player wins. And as you saw, he didn't do his attack since he's essentially dead. All right, so all our logic is working correctly. Now let's make it look proper. So for starters, let's make a health bar instead of a debug pop-up. So over here on the character battle on our setup, we can use the very useful worm bar from the CodeMonkey utilities, which again, you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. I've done several videos where I cover how to make a health bar, so check those out to understand how they work. It's pretty simple, so in here we're just going to use the one from the utilities. Okay, we should be able to see a bar on top of our characters. And yep, there it is. Now let's update our bar. Now in order to update them, let's first store a reference to our world bar. And then on the health system, we have some events that trigger when the health changes. So we can just subscribe to those. So on health changed event, let's subscribe to that. And when the health changes, we just update the health bar. So we set the size and we ask the health system to get the health percentage. All right, that should do it for the health bar. So let's take away our debug pop-ups in here and let's just test. 
Yep, there it is, both of them with a health bar, and let's attack. And there you go, the health bar went down, and yep, just like that. Okay, great. Now when a character dies, let's have him lying on the floor. So over here, when he takes damage, let's ask if the health system dot is dead. Then this character died. We just played the correct animation. Let's test. Okay, here it is. He's going to die on this hit, so hit him. And there you go, he's lying on the floor and the player wins. Great. Now for another effect, let's add the damage pop-ups. Okay, here it is, the damage pop-ups folder. This was created in a previous video, so check that out to see how it was done. In order to use it, it's a very simple function call. So here on the damage, simply go to damage pop-up and create a pop-up right here with this damage amount. Okay, here we are, let's hit him. And there you go, a nice damage pop-up, and same thing on him. Now let's randomize our attack so the number isn't exactly the same every time. So in here, let's define in for the damage amount. So we now have more variation on the damage. And yep, there it is, we've got nice damage pop-ups. Okay, great. Now for another effect, let's add a nice damage tint. Okay, here we are, and hit him, and yep, there you go, a nice tint. Now for some nice blood particles. So in here, to know the direction of the particles, we also need to know who attacked them. So let's add in here another character battle for the attacker. Okay, here we are, let's hit him. And yep, there you go, some nice blood particles happen right there. Now, I haven't done a video on the particle system yet, so let me know if that's something you would like to see. It essentially just creates and updates a dynamic mesh. Let's also add some screen shake on hit. And there it is, a nice screen shake when he gets hit. Okay, great. And finally, let's make a simple battle over window. Alright, here it is the script, very simple, we just have a static instance, so we can have a static function and we simply pass in a winner string. So on the battle handler, over here when you test, instead of doing a pop-up, let's use that. Alright, that should do it. Okay, here we are, let's see who wins, so attack. And there you go, there's all of our nice effects. Now keep attacking, the attacks are now randomized on the damage amount. So let's see if I win, and nope, now he hits me, and nope, and I hit him, and yep, I win, and there you go, battle over, player wins. Okay, awesome. So over here we have our very simple, but also very nice turn-based battle system. We start off with the player's turn, as you can see by the selected circle. So we're currently waiting for a player input, and I can hit space to do an attack, and there you go, he slides towards the enemy, attacks him, and goes back. And when he finishes, it's the enemy's turn, and as you saw, he slides towards the player, attacks him, and goes back. Both characters are using the same script, so all the effects and everything works flawlessly. When the enemy is done, he goes back to there, and now again, as you can see by the selection, it's the player again. And now I can hit him again, and there you go, go back, now it's him. And yep, now I attack him again, and he's still alive, now he kills me. And there you go, battle over, enemy wins. So we are correctly identifying when the battle is over and who was the winner. 
Now in the next video we're going to take this base and expand upon it with multiple enemies, special attacks, items and so on. So make sure you understand how this base works and stay tuned for the next video. As always you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.